I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the IBO featherweight world champion Jazza Dickens. Jazza, this is take two, take three. Trying to get this three, four. Off. Everything good? Yes, all good. And yourself? You're good, man. Just making sure that camera's set up and Wi Fi is all good to, to rock and roll. We'll find out now. We'll find out. Well, listen, yeah, I want to get you on because it's the start of the year. Um, I just want to get your, your, your analysis of. Your career in 2022, you had two fights, two wins, and you picked up a, a piece of the puzzle in that IBO belt. So, yeah, how do you feel like 22 went? Yeah, I would have liked to be more active, and definitely mm-hmm. would have liked to be more active because the two of the three fights last year, but we had two, and then uh, we had one that was important. I mean, probably I, I've been British champion before, European champion, and then. Um, Probably the most important title, I would say, that I've won in my career, the IBO. So, I'm probably the most furthest down the line I've ever been. I'm grateful to be IBO world champion, yeah. Like I said to you, it's probably not the... It's definitely, it's not the most recognised of the, the major belts. You've got the major four, but then you've got the IBO. But it is a piece of the puzzle. It is that sort of carrot to entice some of the, the guys that are above you in the rankings, the guys that hold the other four belts, to... to to obviously to try and fight you and try and get them fights on. Is that how you see this? Yeah, well, I see it as and it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good achievement, you know what I mean? It's, it's, sometimes I, I'll dismiss me achievements because I know I need to go further and I've got to win more. But what I do know about the IBF, it's a, it's a fight, it's a world, if you haven't got a world title, it's one that, that you, it, there's no fighter that wouldn't take it if they haven't got one, if that makes sense. So if you haven't got one, it is one. And if you have got all your titles then you can say it's not a world title so it's, it's one of them it's in the middle so and what what, what happens is when you don't fight for a 12 round title and mm-hmm. you come out the ring and you say I know that we're in a real fight in terms of it we're in a 12 three minute fight we're in a real fight you know what I mean yeah. so when you're fighting for, and defending the IBO world title you win it you're defending it you, you're fighting 12 round t- title fights so that's against people who are um, ranked in the top 10 of the world so yeah I mean, what, for twenty twenty three, you mentioned that you want to stay a little bit more active in twenty twenty two. So this year, we have you got anything lined up for the beginning of this year, the first sort of quarter of this year? Yeah, we 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 going to announce a fight soon, and um, and hopefully that all going well. We have four fights in this year, and definitely want to uh, be unifying the IBO and winning another world title. If you had your choice, then of all the champions, I mean. Who would you who would you want to go? You've got Lopez, you've got Wood, you've got Ray Vargas. So who would you who would you prefer to face coming in 2023 or the, the world champions in this division? All of them and all of them, any of them and all of them. Mm. Um yeah, I, I actually wouldn't think of I wouldn't think of like a one, just not personal, I just want all them belts. You know what I mean, whoever's got them, and by the time I even fight them people. They mightn't even have the belt. So this time a few months ago, what I've learned is that I'd be calling out Josh Warrington. You know what I mean? Now Josh has got fuck all that interest to me. So what what you know what I mean? I'll at least I'll fight him. <laughs> yeah, well actually. <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> Any of them on all of them. Um, whoever's got the titles really up. Um, Michael Conlon, if he wins it, I'd be I'd rather fight Michael Conlon over. I'd rather Michael Conlon win a world title against the Mexican fella that I've heard that he's gonna fight. And then fight Michael. I'd rather do that than fight the Mexican fella. It makes more sense for me to fight him. I would rather fight Lee Wood than fight wow. Lara if if Lee Wood wins because it benefits me and me more because it's it's in England or it be in Ireland and I'm from England and staying in Ireland. So any of them really, and you, you, sometimes beggars can't be choosers in the situation. I mean, I just want to unify and I, um, I just want to make the fights happen. What I have realised is that when you get to this level, like, it's not so easy. And you can look at it from a... That camera's slipping there, isn't it? You can look at it from a fan's perspective and... Mm-hmm. <laughs> what level was that going down? Or was that camera going up? <laughs> so you can look at it from a, a, a fan's perspective and say, what the fuck's up with all these people? Why don't they want to fight each other? And it's not that they don't want to fight each other. 
it's just that sometimes it's it, it's impossible, you know what I mean? It yeah. just does not work. It just doesn't work that way. And I could go on and on and on about the politics. Truth is, I don't know the full the full full um extent of the politics, you know what I mean? So that's just the way it is. I just hopefully hopefully that I can get the fights made that the fans want to see. When you when you talk about obviously the world champions, you've got uh, Lee Wood. He's fighting Lara. That fight's been made. Looks like uh, for the, uh, it's been made for the February eighteenth in Nottingham. I just want to get your your thoughts on that fight because we we all know Lara this side of the the pond, and uh, we all know Lee Wood. So when you look at the fight, how do you see it? Um, I I think that it's it's I think Lara is a tough fight for anyone. I think Lee Wood's a tough fight for anyone. I think that. Lara's still like fresh hands. He's, he's not experienced, you know. Mm. People say people have a lot of fear for fear around him that uh, what he's he's doing to fighters and stuff like that. But if he hadn't beat if he hadn't beat Josh Warrington, we still mm. wouldn't know who he was. And the truth is that he didn't beat the best Josh Warrington. But Josh Warrington would never be the best unless he's the underdog. He's the underdog fighter. Josh Warrington would probably be better now than he was. In his last few fights, only that he had to fight his mandatories and he felt like he was above them. Truth is, he's not above them because he's that type of fighter where he's the underdog. So it's a bit of a, a mad thing there, where he's the underdog. When he's not the underdog, he's not the favourite. But when he is the underdog, he is the favourite. That's how I see Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington. So um, <sighs> if he hadn't beat Josh Warrington, then if if he Josh wanted to done better against them if he was already the champion, that's what I think. But he took us off the ball because that's that's what type of fight Josh is, you know. And then I know that's why Josh won't fight me because there's not an end for him. He's not the underdog. That's why he's calling for the big fights and he deserves. He needs them. He just doesn't want to be staying around that level. Because look what's happened to him now that he has. Yeah, obviously, with the, I know you want to unify against these other world champions, but it looks like they're going to be tied up. Now, can I throw a name at you? I'll you fight them. I'll fight him. You've almost said the name. Doesn't matter. I'll fight him. Right, attitude. But the name I was going to say, I know you would fight him, is Kiko Martinez. Now, we know oh, no. him very well. No. <laughs> I would have guessed course. I know what? I was, I, I was supposed to fight Kiko Martinez for the European champion, for the European, European title. It was fucking hell. Years ago, the fight before I fought Rugonzo. And, he, and we, was, we were signed to fight. We actually signed a contract to fight each other. And he got, and then he got, a, he got an opportunity. He pulled out because he got a, a chance to fight Leo Santa Cruz in WBC. And then I pulled out against the fellow who come after him to go and fight for the against Rugondo for the WBA. So yeah, we should have fought down the line years ago. But happily fight Kiko, yeah, happily one hundred percent. And yeah, of course we could. That's that's the thing. It's a fight that we all know Kiko here because we know that he's faced guys like Carl Frampton, Scott Quigg, um. Kid Galahad, obviously, we know that. What happened in that fight is Josh Wongton, Jordan Gill lately. So he's, he's fought a lot of our fighters on this side uh, in the UK and Ireland. Um, so we know him very well. He's won big fights and he's lost the big fights. So that is a great fight for you to see where you are in terms of that world level. He's an ex-world champion and he's beat good fighters on this side of the uh, in the UK as well. So um, it's a dangerous fight for you and a fight that probably... If you can't get the world champions, Kiko's probably that fighter that stands in that sort of no man's land underneath the world champions. So that'd be a great fight. Yeah, no, Alan, it will be a great fight, but it's not a dangerous fight. I know stylistically, I know years ago he was supposed to be measuring the stick for everyone, and he's still measuring the stick now. You know what I mean? I think it's unfair to sit call him a measuring the stick, you know what I mean? Because he has been world champion and then. I don't know. When, when, it's just the way boxing is. When, when you're high, you're high. P- people think you're the best thing. But then when you're low, you're low. You know what I mean? It's important to keep you, your confidence no matter what. And that's why I say he's not a, he's not a dangerous fight for me. I play a fight in there. I mean, I, I, again, I, I, I put a, I've been talking to a lot of people when we talk about boxing uh, around at New Year's or whatnot. I always say that the featherweight division for me is, is, is my favourite division. I mean, it's... The world titles are getting exchanged left, right, and center. You're all passing them around each other. Uh, you're fighting each other. All the top guys are fighting each other. Um, and you've got talented fighters up and down the whole division, not just here. You've obviously got Josh Warrington, Lee Wood, yourself, Mick Conlon. Do you know what I mean? Um, Isaac Dogbo's got a good fight uh, coming up against uh, Ramirez. 
Um, you've got Rob Z Ramirez, you've got that Lopez, you've got Lara, you've got Ray Vargas, you've got Figueroa, Mark McZile. Um, I guess the list can go on and on. It's a dangerous, dangerous division, and that absolutely is, it is my favourite division right now. So 2023, with all the names I've rattled off, if you get a little bit of luck and, you know what I mean, the, the, the right sort of guidance into the where you need to go, I mean, it's going to be an exciting year for you. Yeah, I, I need the um, I need the, the help of the fans to be honest, Dan, because promoters will not promoters aren't going to give me the chance that I deserve. I, I honestly believe I, I'm I'm avoided massively, and and I'll explain why I think that. Oh, I believe that. Obviously, I'm not the only fighter in the world, and I'm not the only fighter who works hard. Now. I'm not the only one who deserves the opportunity, but I need the help of the fans to be calling for the fights to get the fights made because. Um, I don't think without it right now it's going to be hard to get the fight because I've lost a few fights and I'm in the who needs him club do you know what I mean why I say why I say I'm avoided because people would say to me yeah no one's interested in you jazz well what did he get out of fighting yeah yeah I understand that but since I've won the IBO world title and I still haven't been called out not once do you know what I mean mm. why, when, when does that happen like every time I've had the title held the title I've never ever been called out there's no one is it like I don't I couldn't tell you one person who's who's ever called for a fight with me. And now if I, if I'm not that good, why don't he just call for a fight with me and blast me head off when he gets the opportunity? It, it just doesn't happen, lads. So I need the help of the fans to push me and to um I need to keep doing what I'm doing, obviously, first and foremost, and I've got a great team behind me, but yeah, I need to um, maybe it's because I don't um, shout me shout, shout me mouth off enough, and you know what I mean. I'm not that type of fighter who um want to be a little be honest, I just disrespect a little prick and 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 just just be a wanker. You know what I mean? Who likes them people? And no one likes them. You know what I mean? We watch them though. And that's the thing, isn't it? That's why YouTube boxing is so good because it's full of disrespectful little pricks. <laughs> and that's the two the boxing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm talking about them card Jazza. Walk right onto that one, did I? <laughs> Obviously, I'm far from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is, and people like to see it. People do like to see it, but they also hate to see it as well. They don't support them people, and as soon as they lose, they say, ah, <laughs> there's that yeah. little prick gone. You know what I mean? Where's the next little prick we can, we can watch you lose? That's just the way it is, and I don't want to be... <laughs> Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to... Um... Obviously, yes, I think it's great what they do for boxing, and I think that it's great that they've got eyes on boxing. But I don't want to be that guy, and because yeah. I value my um, the respect that I've got from the fans, I respect. I, I just I, I love being that that type of fighter where fans respect you yeah, for the for, for the hard work that you have put in. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that that no bad, You know what I mean? I just don't want to be that guy, and so so and I'm happy. For, yeah, that's the right. I think that's the right way to go about it. To be honest, Jazza. Um, but to be honest with you, mate, I'm going to be a disrespectful dickhead if I get one of them. They might misfits cards and that. I just want one more fight before I get too old. <laughs> Are you fighting that? You on it? Are you fighting well, I'm trying. I'm trying my best, mate. I'm trying to get on it. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, I got on the one in May. That's that's sort of like what I'm gunning for. Who's the promoter? Like misfits, like KSI and Carl Sowland and all them guys. So. You said that as if I should know who these people are. <laughs> KSI, come on, lad. Pull your finger out. You need Andy McCarthy. On, on, on. <laughs> who are you when I was Andy McCarthy on the channel? And he'll even do his own interviews. Is that, he is that talk to myself? Right I'll just talk yeah. to myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll just put one more question to you then. Um, I know you're in the gym there. I don't know if you're starting a session or finishing a session and you probably want to go and relax. But your ideal 2023, I know who you would love to fight come the end of 2023. You would love that Lee Wood rematch, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, um, I was supposed to fight Lee Wood a few months ago. They asked me to want to fight. I came to Ireland training for it. Oh, and I was so, so happy. I was so happy. Tony called me. He said, Jazz, you got to fight there with Lee Wood. Um, do, you, do you want it? I, I, I was in, I was, I'd just come out to fair with my kids. And, um, like, I just, like, <laughs> weirdly walked behind this truck where no one was and put the phone down and just screamed at the top of my lungs, yes! <laughs> I 
and then come back out like as if nothing, nothing has happened. <laughs> the relief, the relief I felt on that, I was going to get him. It was just unbelievable because I know I've got his number. Mm. I know for a fact I've got his number. Um, I the, 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 the last I heard, he was leaving it with Ben Davison. Now Ben's a good coach, and Ben, Ben being the coach that he is, I think it's important. I'm not having a go with Ben here, but he. How could you say, like, he's got good relationship with his fighters and he's not going to go into the fight if he can't see a way of winning. Mm. Now, Ben does a lot of studying and it's okay being, how can you say, he, not emotional he, when it comes to coaching, but how does he beat Jazz? He, does he doesn't know how to beat Jazz because he can't watch me in one fight. And look for the way to beat me. And then you can look at another fight and say, if that's Yaz, it turns up. Now we have to prepare for two Yazes. And now you can watch another fight and say, ah, we have to prepare for three Yazes. So Ben Davidson hasn't got a way around beating me. Um, he doesn't need Yaz. That, that's the situation, I believe. That's, mm. that's why when the, the fight got left last I heard, the fight got left with Ben. It was pretty much done in my head that I came to Ireland the same for it. I, I was telling people that we fought the five. And um, then all of a sudden we had nothing of it. So then he's fight. So I just believe that. <clears throat> he, he, I just believe Ben can't figure me out. And if he can, uh, you know, I, I'll take my hands off to him. I, th- I, do think he's a, I do think he's a good coach, actually, Ben. He's a really good coach. But I believe, personally, I spoke to Ben when we was in, um, he was in Dubai a few months ago. I was speaking to Ben and him and the lads out the gym, they tried to convince me how I had lead punches. But the little did they, well, they did know that I've, I've, I've fought him and I've been in the ring with him and I've took his best shot. You know what I mean? And I don't know why they were trying to convince me. No, no, he does. And I was saying, no, no, he doesn't. It, it's, you might be telling me that he hit your hands hard, but my my chin is obviously a lot tougher than a lot, a lot of people's chins. And, um, and your hands, so that that's where that's where it was left. Uh, if I could go back in time, I'd say, you know what, lads, he's right. He punches like a mule, and I would never want to get it off him again. And I believe if it did, I believe we'd have the fight now. <laughs> so, you now when you look back in hindsight, and you think, yeah, yeah. like, what would they do different? And mm-hmm. if we could go back, I'd say, yeah, <laughs> you know what, lads, he's right. If the eyes just punch it, I've thought to be like. Well, to be fair, man, it's good to see guys like Lee Wood and yourself and doing more because he's, he's, Lee Woods came up the hard way, you came up the hard yeah. way, so the pair of you have done it, done it hard. Uh, you've, 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 you've chosen to go through the small hall, now you have made it. So it's good to see the pair of you and you are both nice lads, so hopefully you both can get it on again because um, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a great fight in my eyes. And uh, yeah, so fingers crossed. Listen, Jazza, keep training hard, man. And hopefully 2023 you get them them opportunities again. And uh listen, yeah, you know, you're probably one of the nicest guys I know in boxing. So it's good to see speak to you again, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you for talking to me, and thank you for having me on the channel. Appreciate it. Anytime you know you know you always every time I message you, you always say yes, no matter what. So listen, I appreciate it as well, Jazza. Oh, it's good for me, and it's good for me as well. It's a massive platform for me, isn't it? And it keeps me relevant and stuff like that. Fighters complain a lot, don't you? When they, they say, Why is he getting all the coverage? Why is he getting all the coverage? Because fighters have to put in the hard work too mm. and turn up to the interviews. And so I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. My pleasure as always, Jazza. Listen, keep training hard, man. I'll speak to you soon, brother. You too, brother. Thank you. Cheers, Jazza. <laughs>